Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank the witnesses for your testimony. I'd point out that my uh, good friend from Tennessee can sometimes be a bit of an ordinary agitator and slide off topic from time to time. And uh, he'll be very interested in knowing that as I walked into my office on Monday, the first time I'd set foot in there in 2016, I walked back to what I call our lead shop, and there I see there are two new faces. And they were two interns that I had not met uh, before and actually wasn't aware that they were coming on board. And so as I introduced myself to them, uh, the first one, her name is Sydney, and um, I, right away I say, where are you from? And she said, I was born in Canada. Born in Canada? Well, why are you here? Well, because I'm a born in Canada with an American citizen mother and a Canadian father, and I'm a dual citizen. The second I heard that, I picked up my iPhone and I interviewed her. This is two minutes long, and I like to play it for you all so you can hear how simple this argument actually is. Hi, Sydney. I'm Congressman Steve King, and you've joined us as an intern here. Mm -hmm. This is the first moment and the first minute that we have met. <laughs> and I've learned that you're from Calgary, Alberta, and you have a dual citizenship. You were born in Canada with an American citizenship father and a... Mom. My mom was from, my mom's from Rock Valley, Iowa, 4th District. Oh, that even makes it better. <laughs> yeah. Rock Valley. Mm -hmm. That Rock Valley is Lyon County, where the conservatives know what they believe. Yep, Lyon County, C else. County, right up in there. And now, so tell me, you were born where? I was born in Calgary. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, did they give you an automatic Canadian citizenship too, because you were born on their soil? Yep, I have both Amer automatic American and Canadian citizenship. I have two passports. And you haven't renounced either one of them? Not yet. I may renounce the Canadian citizenship one eventually. However, did you ever think about running for president? When I was younger, definitely. As I'm getting older, I'm seeing it may be a little bit impractical, but who knows what the future holds. Many of us have thought it's a little bit impractical, no matter what our age, Sydney. <laughs> um, and so did you ever wonder if you were qualified when you reach how old to be a president? 35. They went, yes. And when you reach that age, did you ever wonder if you were qualified? Um, when I was younger, I didn't really like understand the laws. I kind of wrote it off like, oh, I can't. But then I started looking more into it. And then also learning about Ted Cruz like made me like look and then see, oh, th these legal scholars have written on this and say, oh, no, he is a natural born citizen because he was never naturalized. I'm like, I'm in the same boat. I could definitely do the same thing. It's really pretty simple, isn't it? You would think any presidential candidate could understand that, wouldn't you? Probably. And so I would say there are, there are two ways to become a citizen of the United States, natural born or, or naturalized. naturalized. And, and if you're you... never naturalized, then by default, you are natural born. Exactly. That's really simple. And, and why is it that someone like Lawrence Tribe, a professor of law at the University of Harvard University, why would he have such difficulty with such a simple concept that you've just explained to him? Maybe because politics? <laughs> Maybe. Bless you, Sydney. <laughs> And to tape, maybe because of politics was the last answer that we heard from her. And quite interesting and ironic and coincidental that I would walk into my office. <laughs> that, that I thought it was uh, coincidental with excellent timing that I would walk into my office and find a young lady who hasn't been in this arena, never been to law school, and who happened to find herself in the same, very, very similar, if not identical, birth circumstances of Senator Ted Cruz, who understood this with such utter clarity. And uh, the, the default is this. Um, if, you're, if you're born to an American citizen, say, on, on someone, some other soil, say the son or daughter of a missionary or a missionary couple, then they're automatically American citizens by virtue of the citizenship of their parents. And no one doubts that, or we wouldn't have missionaries traveling around the world. They'd stay here, I would think. And, and she understood with such clarity, she said, if you're not a naturalized citizen, then you are a natural born citizen by default. And that's what the 1790 statute says. That's what all the scholarship says, with except the people that I suspect uh, had that politics in the way of their rationale. So 